My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled Emerging Blockchain Solutions in Oil and Gas. There are finally some serious blockchain-enabled business solutions making headway in oil and gas. Here's a roundup from the recent Blockchain in Oil and Gas conference. In case you're not across it, the Energy Conference Network organizes an annual conference in Houston called Blockchain in Oil and Gas. It attracts a couple hundred interested parties who take in the usual conference staples, presentations, panel discussions, and vendor booths with demos. This year's event coincided with the arrival of a tropical depression, which flooded the city, but the event survived unscathed. I covered the details of my talk in an earlier podcast, so won't go over that ground again. Instead, this podcast will review the highlights from some of the other presentations and panel discussions, particularly the emerging solutions that have captured the attention of the industry. It is these solutions that demonstrate the first tangible value that oil and gas companies are starting to realize. First, a bit of background on the OOC blockchain panel. It stands for the Onshore Offshore Consortium, a group of producers, Repsol, Shell, Chevron, Equinor, and Hess, among others, have formed a collaboration community to explore use cases and to learn together about how this technology impacts the industry. I found the key messages from the initial panel discussion to be very valuable for those contemplating a blockchain trial. First, on collaboration. Unlike some industries where a single large vendor has a big supply chain opportunity, and here thinking retail and Walmart, oil and gas is still too fragmented. The OOC is finding success by working on solutions in a consortium. Second is on vendor selection. It's easy to get hung up on selecting solution partners and key technology vendors. The panel notes that the environment is changing rapidly, and the normal precision in selection processes is actually misplaced. You're likely to get it wrong, but don't worry. It's more important to be agile. Just pick one and get going. Next on targeting. It is, though, very important to pick the right things to work on, because speed to results matter, and there are lots of candidate problem areas. Spend time in business problem analysis to zero in on the right things. Number four is on data. A big job of the solutions teams is the need to agree what data is to be exchanged via blockchain and the need to agree what the exchange data actually means. So plan for this. Number five on standards. Oil and gas likes to standardize things, but in the case of this emerging field, standard setting is possibly too early. Special care should be devoted to setting standards only where truly necessary. Next on diversity. And particularly in this early stage of development, solution apps are going to proliferate. The panel stressed the need for interoperability between solutions, flexibility to change direction, connectivity between the solutions, and transparency of processing. The first use case is AFE balloting. One problem process targeted by the OOC is called AFE balloting, or Authorization for Expenditure, the process whereby capital spending for a well or infrastructure investment is approved. In the case where a project has multiple possible participants, and most of them do, the process to secure agreement on the spend is called balloting, and it behaves like it sounds. The lead operator in a joint operating agreement, or JOA, prepares a draft AFE ballot to send to the other participants, which probably includes other operators and those with a working interest. The draft AFE sets out the proposed spend for each of the participants, pro rata to each is interest level. Remember, some of these mature properties in the U.S. date back 70 years and have changed hands or attracted new participants over the decades. Because the ballot becomes binding and unintentionally sets up future disputes and disagreements, it takes the form of a certified, hand-signed, manually delivered letter. Well, you had me at certified. Participants must consent or not consent within the time limit of the ballot. And ballots trigger lots of back and forth to align the money, and a bit of game theory creeps in as participants scheme, juggle their portfolios, field multiple ballots, and line up the capital. Oh, and did I mention there's a second round of balloting once the first round closes and the money starts to materialize? 
Knowing who is in and who is out triggers a recalculation, and the second ballot repeats the entire process. AFE balloting is a good candidate for reform. The process is clearly time-consuming, paper-based, costly, and very manual. It's likely error-prone, too, which creates lots of potential for disputes. Knowing who is doing what requires a level of transparency that cannot be readily accommodated in a manual, paper-based system. And as a target area, AFE balloting has very low risk. It's about lining up the money, which is a decidedly lower risk profile than actually spending the money. Guild One, a blockchain company based in Calgary, is working on this problem area for the OOC. The next opportunity area is called Salt Water Disposal, or SWD. This intriguing use case involves the handling and disposal of, of wastewater, and in this instance, briny or salt water. Water contaminated with salts and other undesirables is a natural byproduct of oil extraction. And once at the surface, salt water needs to be dealt with. Regulators want precise, frequent, and accurate records of water handling and levy penalties or production curtailment for repeat offenders of the rules. And we're talking a lot of water. The OOC estimates that the U.S. onshore industry alone produces some 20 billion barrels of briny water a year triggering the purchase of 100 million individual water-hauling orders for trucks to collect the stuff and haul it away for appropriate disposal. Equinor alone reconciles some 20,000 trucking tickets per year. SWD participants, that is thousands of truckers with their tanks, operators, and disposal sites, all have their own ways of working, or processes, their own reporting, selected technologies, and business structures. Some are very sophisticated, while others are paper-based. It's a classic many-to-many -many problem, many haulers working for many operators, which impedes efficient single-solution answers. No one player has enough market power to create a one-size-fits-all solution. And simply automating the truck ticket doesn't create enough value to drive change. The data about the haulage, pickup location, disposal location, volume, composition of the water, and the distance hauled, needs to be machine-generated and date and time-stamped. The process of contracting a haul needs to fit into existing business practices, such as registering a supplier for saltwater disposal, setting up the AFE, placing the call-off, dispatching, recording, and settlement. Suppliers need to be paid on time and on terms to motivate their involvement and interest. The proof of concept that the OOC is running is taking place in the Bakken Basin, and early results point to a 25% reduction in total process savings. As with other blockchain trials, the participants quickly see the power of smart contracts that auto-execute when milestones are achieved, including automatic payment to suppliers, which eliminates invoicing. This solution points to the larger potential for blockchain to streamline other commodity handling services, including services for chemicals, sand, and fuels. As noted by the salt water disposal team, digital is about transforming how we work across processes, people, and technologies. Therefore, some things must change and others must stop. Data Gumbo is working on this problem area. And last is fuel bunkering. In much the same way that OOC is tackling the problem of water disposal, Singapore is trialing a fuel bunkering solution, and the parallels are striking. Ships at harbor need refueling, and so contract with a lighter, or a barge, to deliver a cargo of bunker fuel to the ship's fuel bunker, a process called bunkering, or bunker bunker to the bunker. As I see it, bunker fuel is akin to the salt water in salt water disposal, the lighter is the disposal truck, and the ship's bunker is the disposal facility. Participants need to know who has custody of the product and when and the amount of fuel matters because of its value. As with saltwater disposal, the overall process is paper-based, manual, and prone to error. Fraud is a constant worry because the product is so valuable and participants actually budget for theft. An added wrinkle is the incoming change to bunker fuel specifications. Historically, bunker contained as much as 3.5% sulfur, which is a pollutant linked to acid rain and smog but new rules limit sulfur to just 0.5%. Ship owners have been retrofitting their vessels in preparation to use alternative fuels, such as liquefied natural gas or LNG and low sulfur bunker or diesel, or to incorporate on-vessel blending tanks. We're now in a world of multiple marine fuel types. 
Buyers will want assurances that the fuel they purchase meets the specifications, and regulators have stepped up reporting and compliance. Enter Keychain, and that's spelled Q-U-A-Y chain, a new way to streamline fuel bunkering. Its goal is to fully automate the bunkering process from contracting to custody transfer to delivery to compliance. Cargos are recorded on a blockchain structure, and digital sensors at key custody transfer points capture precise machine data about volumes, locations, dates, and times, creating intelligent transfers that are recorded immutably. New participants, such as testing labs and insurance companies, can join in. Two innovations struck a chord with me. First, with Keychain, compliance with regulations can be met without any additional process cost, or, expressed another way, compliance is free. Second, the system is intuitively designed in such a way that users do not require training. The complete bunkering transaction, involving the seller, the lighter, the customer, and all the other participants, can be done on just one screen. If you're interested to learn more about these solutions, to get introduced to the proponents, or to discuss this topic in more detail, just drop me a note. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.